Hello, in this ROG Ally X video, and also for ROG Ally, it's the same for both. I'm going to show you how to set up the Ryu Jinx emulator on well, your ROG Ally, ROG Ally X, so you can play Nintendo Switch games. Just want to say this video is for educational purposes only. I'm not condoning the piracy. Okay, so to do this, really, really simple. First of all, you just open up your web browser, Edge, and you want to search for Ryu Jinx, and obviously you just click here. And yeah, you just type it in, but I've already got it. The search well, searched already there. Go to download, or you can go to the main website and then click download here. If it doesn't appear on Google or Bing, then click Windows. I'm going to cancel it because I've already got it. Next, what you will need is two things. You'll need the Switch firmware, and you can literally just Google Switch firmware and you know get hold of it. It's you know not difficult at all. You know, like Switch firmware. And you know, there's this website here, and then you, you know you can download it like so. Can't put it in the description, but you know it's simple to get hold of. And the final thing you'll need is the production and title keys for encrypting and playing games. I cannot show you you know where to get that, but honestly, Google it. It's really really simple. Now, on a side note, uh, my Patreon page will be launching very soon, where you'll get all of the exclusive emulation content that you will really you know want. Okay, so now once you've got all of that downloaded, and obviously you need games as well, and I've put all my games on an SD card in a folder called ROMs, folder called Switch, pretty self-explanatory, but I recommend having it you know, in somewhere that you can just easily access Super Mario Wonders here. You need it either in NSP format or XCI. Those, those are literally the two file formats you know that are supported. If you have a zip file, you know, extract it, and then you can have a update file as well in these formats and I'll show you how to install them. Next what we want to do is go to our downloads, right click and extract region, so right click extract all, I'm going to deselect this option, click extract, this shouldn't take long, it should be less than a minute. Okay, we are almost done. It should be like maybe five more seconds done. There we go. Next, you want to extract your production keys. And you want to make this, this matches the version, the firmware version that you're installing. Extract. And for the Ujinx, what I recommend is, because it just has the version number in there, right click, rename it. And I'm just going to rename it Ryujinx. The entire folder Ryu Jinx. Here we go. Boom. And now I'm going to right click, copy it. I'm going to Put it again, just put it somewhere that you know you can just permanently leave. And I've got a you know a folder called applications on my SD card where I've got a bunch of you know, applications or will have my second one now. Now that that is there, we can launch it up. So you go to Reujinx, go to publish, there will be a Reujinx file. You just click that, it will open up. You need to leave this command prompt open whilst it does that. It says keys not found. That's fine. Click OK. Go to file. Go to open Ryujinx folder. And this is will be created locally. Go to the system folder. And in there is where you'll copy your keys. So if I go to my downloads directory, the keys folder, copy both of these. So copy that. Go to the system folder. And I can paste it right here. Close both of these now, and if I was to close this down, and let's say if I reopen it, let's get it from here. Okay, so if I reopen this, you will see that that error no longer appears, which is good, which is what we want. Next, we need to install our system version. 
See, it says right here, system version 0.0, .0 cool, nothing's installed, that's how you know. You want to go to tools, install firmware, you can either install it from an XCI or a zip, or you can install it from a directory, but I've left it as a zip file. So go to downloads, and there it is right there. And it's really, just click yes, it's really quick to install, that's it, done. And now before we launch up games, let me just show you a little few options. So you can start gaming full screen by default. You can manage user profiles, because remember, games will probably use these profiles. So if you don't want it, you know, call this <laughs> Wii U player and you don't want this, you know, icon, feel free to change it. In tools, uh, we don't really do anything. In view, you can leave that. And in help, there's the check for updates option. Right now, I've just downloaded the latest version, so there will be no updates. But in options, go to settings. And in here, you want to add a game directory. So click add. And for me, it is on my SD card, ROM, switch, click select folder. And as you can see, there's no games right now. If I click apply, there you go, the games appear. But we're not done yet. But you can add multiple game directories. So you could have them in different locations. That's more than fine. In input, now we're going to set our input. And you just select which player, select the input device. So for the controls on the ROG Ally, it is Asus Tech. If you have an external controller, like a PlayStation, a Nintendo Switch controller, or Xbox, it will appear there. Just select that. Controller type, the best one to choose is Pro Controller. And here you can map your controls now. This is a little tip. You will not be able to map them or play them in game. Whilst, you see these two left buttons over here? You can't, so let me change focus. You see these two over here? Press the bottom one to go to command center. Whilst control mode is auto, it will not work. Whilst control mode is desktop, it will not work. So you want to set it to gamepad. It will mean that the right analog stick will no longer act as a mouse. So you can do this in game once this is once the mouse configuration is done. You know, I mean, controller configuration, you're all good. But it does mean unless you have an external mouse like me, you will have to use the screen to actually select the different options. A bit annoying, but that's just what you'll have to do. So if I click this and I want to map it to you no know, Y, you can do. Uh, I can map this to you know A and B. And the reason it says B and not A, because if I do A, naturally A is over, let me move this back a bit, A is over here on Nintendo controllers, B is here. So it's technically flipped. And so by default, it's already set in the old versions, it never was set. So you can mess around with Dead Zone, you know, other options as well, uh, you know, the different trigger stuff. Automatically, by default, it's pretty good. You know, it's, you, you, don't, you won't have any issues. And you can put turn on rumble as well. You can configure that. Uh, you can configure motion if, you know, you have a controller that supports motion. And here, you can have a different profile. So you just click it, name the profile. And the profile, then you just click the save button here and you can delete them as well. Beauty of profiles is you can have different ones for different games and different, you know, users potentially. Okay, so now that that is done, we click apply. Keyboard hotkeys, we can ignore that. In system, just select your region, select your language, and you can select your time as well. That time is accurate for me. And that's pretty much it here. CPU, you want to leave this as default as host unchecked in graphics. You want to have the graphics backend as Vulkan. If you have issues running in Vulkan, select OpenGL. Vulkan is the best one, you know, typically speaking. It's a you know, more modern backend from IMD. But if it doesn't work, try OpenGL. Next, leave all this as default. But if you hover over enable texture compression, certain games like you know Super Mario Bros. Wonder, which I'll be testing, you know, you know, this can help. I'll leave it off for now. That's just a generic off. But I'll have separate videos covering the best settings for different games. Okay, so resolution scale, and this you want to leave as it is. So just native. So the left one, so 720, will be handheld. 1080 the right side will be docked mode and that's pretty much it so if you leave everything else as default no anti-aliasing click apply audio you can leave it as is and everything else is fine click okay 
And that's it. The last thing I want to show you before I launch up a game, focus a bit more into this, is if you right click, if you go to manage title updates, then manage DLC, and there's like manage cheats as well. So you can, you know, have a look if there's any, you know, cheats, you know, available for different games, you know, you can add them. But what I want to show you, if you go to manage title updates, you click add, and you can update your game. I've got an update right here and you literally just click save and you'll see this go from 1.0.0 to 1.0.1 there we go and you do the same for dlc you know accordingly and that is it you can just double click or right click and run application to run your game okay so here's a little tip now when playing your game if you click the bottom, if you go to command center for so the bottom of the two left buttons, you want control mode to be gamepad, not auto, not desktop, otherwise it will not work. If you want to go full screen, you go to options, toggle, full screen. And that's it. If you want to turn VSync on and off, you can change it here. If you want to change it from docked to handheld, you can just press here. So it's selected as handheld, you know, docked. And that's pretty much that. Those are the only sort of settings that you want to mess with. And the reason you might want to switch from dock to handheld, people say, oh, you know, always use dock because, you know, you are running at 1080 or the higher resolution. That's fine if you have a beefy computer, like with an RTX 4090 or even like an RTX 3080. But I know Royal LIX, which is powerful, but not so powerful that you can do whatever you want with it. You may want to go in handheld mode. And I always recommend checking out the Wii U Drinks compatibility page, which I'll provide a link in the description so you can actually see how you know your game performs that you're trying because it might not work at all so you might think in scratching your head why isn't it working and the other thing is it will it might show it might actually give you the best settings to get the best performance out of that game but let me just show you it working and then we can wrap this video up again i've just le left it in windowed mode but you can make it full screen As you can see, the game is now working. Yeah, performance may vary. I will, so like again, if I go to handheld mode, probably get a bit you know better performance out of it. But I will have separate videos for all you know the popular games like Super Mario, Wonder, Odyssey, and Legend of Zelda, Metroid Prime, so I can show you the best settings to get the best performance from each game. So that's it. That is how you set up Ryu Jinx emulator on your ROG Ally and ROG Ally X. If you have any questions, feel free to post down in the comments below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned for my Patreon page coming very, very soon. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.